some of the new features of Final Cut Pro 10, namely uh, the completely reimagined multicam and advanced chroma gear. Before I actually get into my demo, I want to talk about some of the gear that I'm using here. I'm, I'm running my presentation off this iMac, 27-inch iMac. It has an Intel Core i7 processor, which is like a perfect engine for delivering smooth HD playback and uh, providing fast background rendering, which Final Cut Pro 10 is capable of. Um, I'm connected to this R6 RAID. This R6 RAID is capable of delivering an astounding 800 megabytes per second. Now, here's the best part. All of this is connected via this single cable, this Thunderbolt cable. Now, this cable is simple in that you just plug it in the back of the Mac, plug it into your drive, and you can plug it into a monitor. It actually carries both display information and data. It's super simple. And I'm able, as you'll see in the demo, to deliver like nine streams of HD playback via multicam. So let's go ahead and jump in, and I'll talk more about uh, Thunderbolt as we go through the demo. All right, so what I have here is a, a shoot of a behind the scenes of an uh, Audi car commercial. And it uh, was shot with 17 different cameras over a two day period. As you can see, this shot is a chase car with a Russian arm and uh, shot on a green screen, and we want to knock out the green screen and put a background there. So I'm going to go into Final Cut Pro, and I'm going to click the effects browser, and I'm going to just use this keyer here. I'm going to just grab that keyer. I'm going to drop it, drag and drop it on top of the clip. And just like that, the uh, background is knocked out. Now, it's not a perfect key, although it's close to a perfect key. Apple calls this an adaptive keyer, which simply means this. The keyer is picking the best background and the best range of pixels to create the key but we can actually improve it using some of the advanced controls in Final Cut Pro 10. So what I'm going to do is, with my playhead parked over the clip and the clip selected, I'm going to go into the inspector. And you can see these are all my key controls. I'm going to spill open this section called color selection. And I'm going to get a color wheel. Now this color wheel allows me to refine my mat. And what I want to do is click this manual button, because I'm going to use the manual settings. And you have two graphs, an inner graph and an outer graph. The inner graph controls the actual core mat that's being used. Now down here, at the very bottom, you see a little a bleed through from the key. So what I'm going to do is grab that mask and I'll drag it out. And as I do, you'll notice I'm either subtracting pixels or adding green pixels to the, to the key. So I'm going to drag outward so I'm adding more saturated green pixels to clean that up. All right, now any good key is going to be judged by its mat. So there is a mat view inside the keyer. So I'm going to turn on the keyer or the mat. And you can see here that I have areas of transparency with the in, inside the mat that I want to remove. And so I'm going to use this graph here that looks like a pie slice. I'm going to grab this dot in the center. And I'm going to drag away from center. And as I do this, I'm essentially removing some of the less saturated pixels in the mat. Right? And I, I want to do this so I'm not completely removing the transparency in the window or the, or the headlight here. Right, I'm going to turn this back on, the composite view, and let's go ahead and add the background. I'm going to go to the title browser, and I'm going to go to uh, my behind the scenes. You can create titles directly in Apple's Motion, which is a companion product to Final Cut Pro. I'm going to drag this orbit text, I'm going to drag this on top of my key. Just connect it there. And just like that, I have a background. Notice the text is 3D. It actually tracks with the arm. This is all created in Apple's motion. Drag and drop. I got the background, everything I need. And <coughs> this is a 64-bit application. I could now work on other parts of the uh, application of the program. And it's actually background rendering using the 64-bit architecture. And uh, the Intel iCore processor is making, that, making fast work of that. All right, now let's look at mul multicam. I'm going to jump over to the multicam interview. And uh, it's a, it's just I jumped to this marker here. And I want to work with this driver. It was shot with essentially four different cameras. And I also have uh, a hard disk recorder. And I want to turn this into a multi-cam clip. So what I'm going to do is select all of these clips. I'm going to right click and choose new multi-cam clip. All right. And a window is going to come up. It's going to allow me to name it. I'm going to call this uh, precision driver, precision driver, clip. And um, there's some settings here. I'm going to talk more about these settings a little bit later. But some, to make things simple right now, I'm going to choose automatic. Now what's going to happen is most of these 
clips don't have time code. They were shot with DSLRs, 5Ds, 7Ds. They were shot with some time code, some without. And an amazing new feature in Final Cut 10 is the ability for it to look at the reference audio track in each of these clips and synchronize all of the angles based on the audio in the clip. And you can do that by making sure that this checkbox is checked, use audio for synchronization. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And just like that, I get my, my uh, multi-camera clips, this precision driver. Now, in order to see all the angles, I'm going to go to the window menu and choo choose Show Angle Viewer. Now, I can skim over the clip, and you can see all of the angles. There's my four angles plus my audio angle that I selected. And I'm going to go ahead and skim through this, play this back. And again, this is all playing back. All these streams is playing back over Thunderbolt, 10, megabits per sec 10 gigabits per second, playing back off an iMac. And by the way, with Thunderbolt, you can actually do this on a laptop. And uh, that's what's amazing about uh, this technology. I can do a multi-cam edit on a laptop without any issues. It's playing back in sync. And uh, you have different ways of displaying the multi-cam. You can go up to settings, and I can say, look, I want to see a 4-up, or I want to see a 16-up view, or I can see 16 angles. If you're working on a laptop, you might want to work it with two angles. I'm going to go ahead and select it back to four, four angles. And here's what's really cool about the multi-cam functionality and why it's completely reimagined. I'm going to go ahead and click this. I'm going to go ahead and click this bank switcher at the bottom, and switch over so I can see the audio angle. Let's say I wanted to use the audio. In other words, lock that in, but be able to switch picture apart from the audio because this is my clean audio. So I'm going to do is select this button, this audio button, and select the audio when it turns green. So I've essentially said this is the angle I want to use for my audio. Now I'm going to go back to the video side and. I want to click this blue film strip, and it, which allows me to select the video angles independent of the audio. So I'm able to switch seamlessly between the different angles. All right, now let's look at the inside of the multi-camera clip. Let's look at the, the guts of the clip. I'm going to double click on the clip itself. And it opens up in this what's called this angle editor. And this angle editor is amazing in that you can see all of your angles kind of lined up. There's the audio angle I selected. There's the different angles. You can adjust sync if it's off. You can do it right here in this angle editor. You can also rearrange the angles in, in here. Like for example, let's say I wanted the wide shot at the top. I'm going to just drag this. I'm just going to move it straight up to the very top. Let's say I want to move this close up here. And maybe I want to move the wide and medium shot here. And what that does is it gives me the ability to kind of change my orientation, the assembly area, so how I, when I click on these, it's much, it's much simpler for me to see what I'm, I'm click, clicking on. So what I'm going to do is step out of this, and I'm going to go back to the clip itself, and I'm going to pick an endpoint. I'm going to go ahead and pick an endpoint, <laughs> and I'm going to press I. Now what I do is take this clip, and I want to edit it into the timeline using Final Cut Pro 10's magnetic timeline. So I'm going to grab this clip here. I'm going to just drop it. And notice all the clips move out of the way. Everything's pushed down. Everything stays in clip. That's, this is Final Cut 10's magnetic timeline in action. Now what I want to do is I want to do a multi-camera edit. So I'm going to play this back. And as it's playing back, I'm going to switch to these different angles by clicking with this razor blade. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit the space bar. Let's begin playback. And as it's playing, I'm going to cut to this angle. I'm going to cut to this angle, cut back to this one, cut back to this one, cut back to this one, cut back. I can do flutter cuts, what have you. And by the way, I can map these to a keyboard, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can use the keyboard to do this. And uh, let's play this back. I'm going to go back into the timeline. And I'll just play it back for you. In fact, let me resize the window so you can see what's going on better here. So I'm minimi minimizing this side, the angle view. I'm play this back. You can see it's playing back over Thunderbolt, off of my RAID, playing back without dropping frames, clean. And I'm pushing each one of those angles is, uh, is roughly 225 megabits per second. Uh, I have a lot of data pushed through there. And again, let me stress that I can do the same thing on a laptop through Thunderbolt. All right, so let's look at one more uh, instance of multi-camera editing. I'm going to jump to the uh, multi-cam helicopter. Jump over here. Look at this and 
jump to that particular shot. Now, if I play this back, you know, it's a basically a helicopter shot for the chase guard. It's kind of boring. What I'd like to do is break that shot up into a series of shots using Final Cut Pro's amazing reimagined multicam editor. So what I'm going to do is go into the helicopter aerials or helicopter pass, and you can see that there are nine angles. Actually, there's a lot more than nine angles. There's a lot of angles here, and they're all HD, 225 megabits per second. I'm going to select them all, right? And I'm going to right-click on them. Actually, let me do one other thing here. There we go. Select them all, right-click, and choose new multicam clip. And I'm going to name this helicopter or heli multicam clip. And uh, let's talk about angle assembly. This pop-up controls how the angles are actually arranged within the multicam clip. If you choose automatic, Final Cut Pro will decide the best order to put your uh, clips in. If you choose angle ordering, you have it automatic. You can have it order them by a time code or content created. Now, let me say something about this. This is amazing. If you have a single camera and you start and stop it, Final Cut Pro will know that based on either the time code or the content created and properly space those clips over time with the proper gaps so everything stays in sync. You don't ever have to worry about a clip that you, a camera that you start or stopped it not being in sync with the other angles. Okay, so I'm going to choose automatic. And then lastly, angle synchronization, I'm going to choose here, notice time code, content created, start of clip, marker. Now before I do that, each one of these clips, I placed a marker at a key spot of the action. You can set a marker for each of these clips at a key spot. I'm going to go ahead and from this pop-up, I'm going to go down and choose first marker on the angle. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it creates the helicopter multi-camera clip, clip. And I want you to see that uh, there it is. I'm gonna, let me go ahead and switch it into multi-view. I'm going to switch it into nine-angle view and then play this back. I want you to see... Again, nine streams of HD, 12, 12 actually, all playing back over Thunderbolt off of my R6 RAID. And if I had a broadcast monitor, I'd be seeing on a broadcast monitor because Thunderbolt allows you to daisy chain this stuff together. How simple is that? So there we have it. It's all played back, playing back. Now let's do a quick edit, and I'll end my demo with that. What I'm going to do is uh, grab this... A uh, helicopter. I'm gonna I'm gonna mark an endpoint right as the camera uh, as the helicopter is approaching the the chase car. I'm gonna mark an endpoint, and I'm gonna drag this entire clip from the a uh, clip browser. Drop it on the clip. Wait for it to turn white, and I'm gonna choose replace from start. And just like that, that clip is in place. We're completely replaced with the multi-camera version of that same shot. In fact, if I want to look inside it, just quickly, if I open it up, I just want you to see this. Look at all these angles in the angle editor. And notice they're all synchronized by marker. So you can see Final Cut Pro did a great job synchronizing. Notice that all clips don't even have to be of the same duration or the same time code value or anything. There, they just synced it up by marker. So I'm going to step back out of this, and I'm going to perform an edit on this clip. And, and this time, instead of using my mouse, I'm going to use the keyboard. Earlier I said you could use shortcuts. One, two, three, four are mapped to the different angles that you're seeing in the angle editor. So I'm just going to skim through this, and I'm going to skim. Let's say when I make a cut here, I'm going to press two on the keyboard, skim, three on the keyboard, skim, four on the keyboard, skim, five on the keyboard, skim, six, skim, seven. You can do this in real time, but I just wanted to show you that it's making a cut every time I press a keyboard shortcut. I can press space bar. And now we're seeing all these playback, this multi-camera edit, just like that. Now, let's say I was, didn't have my coffee this morning, and I could tell you this morning that I did, because I'm a little animated. I could swap out those angles very simply. Let's say I'd, I, I was a little slow, or I didn't get it. I could just move my play over the angle. And I said, I really want that angle to be this one. And you click, swaps out that angle. Move the play over this one. I want that angle to be this one. Click, and it swaps it out. And I play this back, and just like that, I'm able to swap out angles, play it back, see it instantly using Final Cut Pro 10's advanced multicam feature. So, to wrap, using Final Cut Pro 10, Final Cut Pro's amazing reimagined multicam editor, Keir, using RAID and a, and a simple Thunderbolt cable to connect it all. Appreciate your time. Thanks for coming to the Intel booth.